This meeting is being recorded uh, per Governor Lamont's executive order 7B. Okay, thanks. Upon motion duly made and seconded, I've been appointed as temporary chair for this evening's Zoning Board of Appeals convened on March 22nd, 2021. The first item up for um, hearing tonight is application number 6242-21. Don, I believe our tradition is that you would read these into the rec, the, the, you read the application into the record. Do I have that right? Yes. So any member can go ahead if you have your um, agenda and read the application. Uh, do you want? Do you want to? Um, do you want one of us to handle that? It sounds like I could do that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. That's so um, we have before us tonight uh, public hearing uh, number one. We have application number six two four two dash twenty one. Uh, one variance from section uh, three seven point three B one non conforming buildings to allow non conforming building to be enlarged contrary to the provisions of the regulations. And number two variance from section four point one C and that's the agricultural zone dimensional requirements to allow building area of sixteen point five one percent as against 10 percent maximum permitted and number three is variance from section 4.1 c agricultural zone dimensional requirements to allow 10.37 feet side yard setback as against 25 feet minimum required and this is to facilitate the addition to the south, to the southeastern side of the building uh, and, and this uh, variance is this variance application is contingent upon the pending purchase agreement to acquire approximately 400 square feet of land from adjacent property uh, towards the south of the property. And the location for this application is um, 135 Elm Street. The applicant is Jonathan Makowski. The open hearing deadline for this hearing is April 24th. So obviously we have 65 remaining days. So Mr. Chairman, what we have, we have three variances here on the same um, card. Uh, as you know, any number of variances can be had on the same card. Okay. so. Uh... Charles, our tradition is now that we, we hear from the applicant on this one, and then we close comment on this one and move to the second application. Uh, we will continue with this application. And okay. then once we're done, we will, once we're finished with this application, then we move to this next one. Okay, so um, so I'll ask Mr. Mikowski then if you could just say your name and address for the record and then tell us about it. Before, before you go though, Mr. Chairman, I have a staff report, um, which I yep. usually read in the records before uh, the applicant speaks. Great. So um, the, the, the applicant, as we said, is Jonathan Mikowski and um, the request is, uh, like we said, to allow a non-conforming building to be enlarged contrary to the applicable provisions of the regulations. And um, we have the variance for the 16.51% uh, as against 10% maximum permitted. And we have um, that 10.37 feet uh, side yard setback. So uh, to give you some background to this uh, application, the applicant is interested in uh, extending the southeastern section of his residential building. And um, when checking the zoning map for the town, it was realized that the property is located within the agricultural zone, thus making the residential building non-conforming, legally non-conforming, because it's a residential building. The, the property is being used for residential. Um, the zone is agriculture. 
So the applicant was informed that the zoning regulations prohibits the expansion of a non-conforming buildings. And um, that's according to section 7.3A5, which states as follows, no non-conforming use and no building containing a non-conforming use shall be created, extended, or expanded unless A, the use is changed to a conforming use, or B, the commission has approved a special permit application demonstrating in, so, in the sole judgment of the commission compliance with the following conditions. One, the building and site shall be de designed to enhance compatibility and reduce incompatibility with abutting uses and the neighborhood. Two, adequate buffering shall be provided to minimize adverse in impact on adjacent uses and three, the nature and intensity of the use in relation to the size of the lot will be more in harmony with the neighborhood and more compatible with adjoining uses. Ultimately, the applicant is required to seek the commission's in, in approval. So the, the applicant has entered into a contract to purchase approximately 400 square feet of land which would give an additional seven feet of setback, but would still be less than the required 10 feet uh, side yard um, setback. On the northern side of the property, um, on the northern side of the property, the setback is currently 22.2 feet. So there you have a, a legally non-conforming uh, 2.2 eight feet short of uh, the required uh, setback. Uh, also a portion of the house and the deck to the south has been extended approximately two feet into the side yard. So there's a second um, existing non-conformity of the building. The front of the building, uh, as a matter of fact, approximately a half of the building is within the 40 foot front yard uh, setback. Uh, there's no prior variance on record for this property. The applicant has entered into an agreement, like we said, with the adjoining owner at the southern side of the building. And once, once this, uh, if this variance is granted, then the applicant would, um, the, the deal would go through, so to speak, and, and he would be able to purchase that additional so, so conversely, if the uh, motion, if the if it fails to 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 be approved tonight, then um, the sale would not be binding on the applicant. So, so, so currently, there's a five foot uh, setback at that end, at that southern end, and that would move from five feet to ten point three seven feet with the additional land. So, the applicant is is making every effort here to um. To, to, to get as close as possible to, uh, to the required setback. The agreement for sale is contingent upon this variance being granted. And, um, and so this is a building that's surrounded um, with non-conformities, as I just uh, explained. Uh, the closest residential zone, which is a, a residential zone, which is 800 feet approximately to the west, that requires a side yard, a minimum side yard of 10 feet and a total side yard of 23 feet. The C residential zone um, is located uh, 2,000 feet to the south, which requires a minimum side yard of five feet and a total of 15 feet. The required front yard setback is 40 feet as, as is our typical for um, uh, all the zones in, in town. So in concluding, uh, this is a property which has a legal non-conforming use. Uh, being a residential uh, property and a residential building in an agricultural zone, uh, this non-conforming building uh, exists by way of area. It's, um, it's, it's 1,519 square feet which already represents 13% of the building area as against 10 feet uh, required. Uh, a few 
legal non-conformance setbacks, which is typical of a uh, number of residences in this agricultural zone. And it's because of the location of these houses and agricultural parcels with a 25 feet uh, setback. This 25 feet setback is uh, designed uh, for uh, agricultural use and not for residents. Like I pointed out, uh, the closest residential districts and um, there, there's not one single residential district that asked for 25 feet setback for one yard. Um, so 10% so, so of the building area, uh, which is uh, what the regulations ask for, that also is being um, expanded now to, I think it is 16.5%. So, so thus makes it necessary for the um, request for variances. Uh, so, um, this property is requesting a side yard setback of 11 point, no, I'm sorry, that's 10.37. So staff has no objections to this variance being granted, uh, subject to the acquisition of the aforementioned property to the south. Um, yeah, it appears that if this variance is denied, like I said, the um, sale agreement uh, will become null and void. And that's um, my, uh, report on this um, appearance request. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Um, Mr. Mikowski, we can hear from you now on the application. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. I wasn't clear. Um, yeah, so Charles, uh, you know, went through just about everything there. Um, I can share my screen and show the, the building plot if that's something um, everybody wants to see. You can kind of understand understand a little more what Charles was talking about. Um, yeah, it sounds good. Okay, let me see if I can uh, share. Oh, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing, so. Um, okay, so in that case, um, let me see if, um, what did it say? I had um, disabled screen sharing. Yeah, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. It says. Okay, I guess that's um, done automatically from um, the setup. So um, in that case, let me um, let me attempt to um, to okay. yeah. Well, well, as Charles tries to. Um, get that up so everybody can see. Um, the intention of this uh, building addition is for a uh, main living level uh, master addition. Um, it will be uh, built up on piers because this is also the 100 year floodplain zone. So it's zone AE. Um, I did go through the Inland Wetland Commission um, last week. Um, they did approve um, this, this addition as far as their standards are concerned. Um, we have added in some uh, provisions to mitigate flood waters and things like that with a rain garden. Um, you know, Charles really talked about most of what's gonna what's gonna go on. Um, if anybody has any specific questions, uh, you know, love to answer them. Uh, so if we look at the map, the way I'm looking at the the map of your property, and it's a rectangle oriented this way. And if I'm understanding properly, you're going to buy a small rectangle that's adjacent to it, outlined in the green. Um, co ahead. Correct. I don't. I don't see the, the green outline. But yeah, if you're looking at the um, the plot plan um, with the street on the right side, um, you would see at the bottom there is like yeah, a jutted out piece here. It's about yep. 400 square feet. Um, that would be the piece that um, we would purchase from uh, David Anderson of Anderson Farms. Um, I have the contract should be should be on file. I believe I gave a copy to Charles, uh, stating you know once this variance is approved, then that contract becomes live, yeah. and uh, then I will um, purchase this piece. You know I have the lawyer set up to to take care of those things, and obviously um, Jim Dutton has surveyed this um, and added that to our parcel, which we would then uh, submit the lot line adjustment with the town and. and go through all those steps to 
you know, attach this to our existing parcel. And then once you have that attached, you are then anticipating you'd be in full compliance with the two very with the two regulations. Um, I, yeah, ideally, I mean, we tried to buy as much as we could, as much as Mr. Henderson would uh, would part ways with. Um, him being a farmer, you know, land is his business, so he was able to, you know, accommodate us with this seven foot piece. I'm trying to get, I tried to get to that twenty five, um, and you know, eliminate the need for the variance. But uh, yeah, this is what was accepted by him, so this is what we, you know, agreed upon. So, Art, I just don't understand that with with this addition. Are you compliant without the variance or with this addition, you'll be at the 16%? 16%. So yeah, with, with this addition, the full lot coverage will be 16% with, with this parcel here. Um, my, my main intention was the 25 foot setback. Um, and then as we got into this process, realized there was the um, lot coverage and uh, the, the, you know, the other variances discussed. So. Um, you know, initially I was trying to get the 25 foot from the new addition, um, but you know, we just couldn't, he couldn't accommodate that, that much length. Uh, so we did get, you know, the 10.37 feet. Um, so that at least gets us closer and into, you know, a typical residential zoning sort of setback. I just have a question. Is um, the map that you're trying to put up, Charles, the same one as we have in our uh, packet? Yes, as a matter of fact, I'm looking at the map on my screen. So, here now. I thought you were seeing it, but it seems you no, are. No, but we have, it in, we have it in our packet, so. Okay, so if you have it in your packet and you, yeah, are you able to see, because I have it on my screen, are you seeing it or am I not doing something? No, well, I don't see it. Okay, so you are, you are screen sharing. So as far as I'm concerned, it should be shared with everyone, but it seems to me that I'm the only person seeing it uh, for what reason. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's really necessary if we all have it in the packet. Okay, so so just just to um, reiterate what, what um, Mr. Makoski said and to, to um, shed some more light on, on, on this. Um, so we have three variances, all right? So the first variance in itself is to pretty much have the non-conforming um, building expanded. So that is something that is gonna be going to the um, Planning and Zoning Commission. And, and, and because the, the building is, ex is being expanded, we have, um, we, we have a result in two other variances. So then the one that the applicant just spoke about is um, that to the, to the south um, eastern side of the property, there is um, delineated by that red line, if you could see it on your, um, the packet that I sent you, this, this original red line that says existing, that is the original um, property boundary, which would be five feet from this extended section of the building. So, this rectangular arched area here um, to the to the to the uh, east of the of the building. That's the ad addition that Mr. Makowski is gonna um, put on to enhance his, his residential building. And by 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 doing this, by by extending this building out, um, it would have been five feet from this. Um, existing property line, but because he attempted to um, get as close as possible to the 25 feet, he, he acquired this um, next piece of property adjacent um, to his property, and that's an, an additional seven feet. So that's what um, comprises the new uh, the, the setback variance that he's, uh, that he's um, requesting. And then the, the final variance is for the is for the building area. So the original building area is already 
in excess of the required 10% because it's 13%. 13, uh, it's 13% as it is. Now with the addition, it would be 16.51%. So he's moving from, from a non-conformity of 13% uh, percent to, 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 um, to 16.51%. If that explains it, Mr. Chairman. Any other members of the Board of Appeals have questions? If not, I'm all set. Um, and I guess what do we do now, Charles? Do we just do we uh, vote now, or do we? Um, so, so you next application and close public comment. You have the choice of um. So the, the meeting is divided into two sections. There's the public hearing section and the public meeting section. So what you you may um, leave this open if you want to table it, or you may close the public hearing for this one, then move on to um to the second public hearing, when both public hearings would have been heard. Then we go to the public meeting and then we take the first one and then um, we could have discussions, we could vote on it and whatever. Likewise, the second application, we take that one, we make motions, we could vote on it. I mean, you guys could vote on it and um, take the necessary uh, so, action. Um, last, uh, thanks, Charles. So any other questions from the ZBA members? If not, uh, I make a motion to close the public hearing on this application. Is there a second? Second. Uh, those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, so the, this portion of the public of the agenda is closed for public hearing. We'll move to the uh, next application. And uh, Charles, would you like to read that one into the record? The next application that we have here is um, from um, the Walcott Hill properties, and um, it's a variance from section 6.2b2 to allow parking spaces serving business use at 683 to 689 Walcott Hill Road to be located on section of the property zone, zone uh, for residential. And um, this is this variance is also um, contingent upon the residential property, uh, which is known as tax ID number 177095, being combined with 683 to 689 Walcott Hill Road. So, uh, 683 to 689 Walcott Hill Road um, is located in the general business district, um, pretty much between Dix Road and Clearfield. Uh, the property, uh, the existing property, which uh, has uh, three businesses, I think it has a pizza, a Leo's Pizza, a barber, and a wine store. Um, it's located in the general business district. Uh, and that parcel is uh, 7,120 square feet or 0.163 acres. And the floor area uh, is approximately, by my calculation, um, it's 4,200 square feet and the applicant can um, attest to that or if he has a different figure because the reason why I came up with that is I was unable to access that property information on the assessor's website because of some recent change in the in the tenure of that property. I was not able to assess it, but I did some rough calculation and I came up with 4,200 square feet in um, floor area, gross floor area for that uh, property. Um, there's a residence on the upper floor and then there are six parking spaces directly in front of this building. In all, there are 18 parking spaces in front of the building and the adjacent building. No, because there's there's also 675 Walcott Hill Road 
uh, which is at the corner of Walcott and Dicks. And I mentioned this because there's a, a parking is spread right across the front of these two uh, properties. And it's a total of 18, uh, like I said, six is in front of the subject property. I, my assumption here is that whichever uh, client comes, they could park in any of these spaces. Um, so the applicant owns the vacant lot directly behind 683 to 689. And that's to the west of the of the subject property. And like I said, it's ID number 177095, which is approximately 3,490 square feet or 0 0.08 acres. Um, so with a parking requirement of five spaces per thousand square feet of retail or service business. Okay, so um, as I was saying, um, with a parking requirement of five spaces per thousand square feet of retail or service businesses and, uh, and two spaces for residential unit, the subject property would be required to provide a total of um, 22 spaces. So the applicant is proposing to combine the residential lot with the subject property in order to provide additional parking. And um, that, that new uh, parking area, which is down residential, that has um, approximately nine spaces, uh, which would end up been having a total of 15 spaces for um, that property, which would still be deficient um, in, in required spaces according to the regulations, but it would, in, it would improve the uh, existing non-conforming uh, situation. Um, so this, this added parcel, uh, uh, according to the applicant would provide much needed parking for the property. And um, for this staff recommends approval for this application. Thank you, Charles, I appreciate that. Um, so now we'll hear from Mr. Pappas. Okay, uh, the property actually where the parking could you please state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, my name is John Pappas. My address is 34 Kent Lane in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying to add parking that we never had. We've been there for 45 years. I recently purchased most of the rest of the building when my father, he owned part of it. And I purchased the property behind us, which was a house and a non-conforming lot. The non-conforming lot, is between, you know, behind our uh, business, Leo's Pizza, 689 Walker Hill Road. Uh, it is actually between Dale Road and Clarefield, not Dix Road. And there's 17 parking spaces up front because when they did the crosswalk, we lost the spot. Uh, ever since D&D &D moved in, which I guess was busier, a little busier now than Bliss Market was, and the people who bought the market after Bliss Market, We've been parking in one of my neighbor's driveways. Three of my employees got permission because the guy no longer lives here, lives in Florida. So it's, it's been hard right now ever since they came in for my employees to actually park and come to work. Never mind me keeping the barbershop vacant over the last four years because I'm afraid to put something in there because it'll, you know, it'll hurt my business for parking reasons. You know, a lot of times we deliver and I see my drivers driving around the front of the building trying to find somewhere to park. So a few years back, I bought the house behind us and we came up with a plan. I think Charles has the blueprint and we're trying to fit nine to 10 spots if we can, which will help us, you know, at least it'll get my employees somewhere to park. They come to work and they actually have a place to park and get to work. Uh, we just did some drainage work 
in the back of our building, we had an old dry well that was starting to fail and it was flooding one of the lower levels of our building. So over the last month or so, we ended up going about 200 feet. There was no drainage on Clearfield. So we had to go to Dale Road and we just put up, you know, another 60 feet worth of drainage up Dale Road to a catch basin in front of uh, 15 Dale, which is the house where the non-conforming lot is behind. So at this point, I'm just asking permission, you know, to make make it actually a safer a safer area too, because obviously you guys know where we are. That's always been an issue of parking there. It's it's tough. You know, we had a couple of uh, a couple of tragedies in front of our building. You know, one of the people that worked for me, her mother got hit by a car and got killed there over about four or five years ago, maybe a little longer now. So it, it was always my intention to try to get that back lot and try to try to alleviate some of that parking. You know, so you see, we have you know a full a full market and us seventeen spots is is crazy. And since the time D and D came in, you know, when Bliss Market was there with us for you know forty years or so, how long have they been? You know, we've been there together with them. They always park their employees on Clearfield Road and they allowed their employees to park behind their business where the new owner does not want his employees to park behind his building. So he's taken up more of the street parking. So his employees come earlier than us. We open at 1030. It, you know, his store opens much earlier. So when we get to work, when all these years we're able to park on the road on Clearfield, we get there now and we're blocked out. You know, some of his employees have been parked in there and uh, it, it leaves us, it leaves us short. So I'm asking you for this variance, you know, just to try to alleviate that problem. And I don't know what else to say, but that's, you know, that's what I'm looking at. Actually, the drainage was a huge expense. You can imagine digging 60 feet down a town road to add drainage just because, you know, there was, and I had to go. 200 feet through the back of that Dale Road property to get there. So that part, you know, at least that part is done. It'll handle the parking lot right now with what we have drawn up on the print. Thank you, so Mr. if you guys have any questions. Yeah, thanks. So the lot behind you as shown on the map, we have it in our materials. That's what's there now. Is it just uh, concrete or is it grass? It's grass. 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 They had an old wooden fence, you know, the period of old wooden fence. We would we would make that a lot nicer. We would actually put a fence back up around the parking lot. We have drawings in there, maybe shrubbery and uh, more more or less a nice white vinyl fence. Yeah, that's. I was going to ask: Is there any fencing right now between that lot and and uh, either number eleven on Clearfield or number fifteen? Uh, on the opposite street, is there fencing? Yeah, it, it was a fence put up by. Uh, it was put up years ago by Jeff Wilcox, actually, and he brought the house behind. Which Fifteen Dale Road is the house behind D and D Market, and the lot comes all the way. It comes from Dale to Clearfield. The non-conforming parcel of that lot is actually right behind me, and they just put this old wooden fence up to, you know, put it up just to hide. I guess are just to put in their property to close in their property. And that goes, that fence was between our building and them came down Clearfield and went between, I think, I don't know what the house number is, but it, Bill, I know Bill Smith owns the house and that's where we're actually parking our cars in his driveway because he's been in Florida for years. And there's that old wooden fence goes between his parcel and the parcel on, uh, on uh, behind 15 Dale. We would clean all that up and make it obviously a lot nicer. I have a question about employee parking. Would the parking be only for your employees or could customers go in there too? I would like customers to be able to use it also, you know, utilize some of the street parking that we've been utilizing over the years and allow some of our customers to use it. The mm -hmm. package store, the, you know, the package store, the my vacant my vacant 
parcel there now that used to be the barbershop. If you can imagine, I had a lot of people coming in and asking to rent that spot. But if it was another barber or beauty parlor and they put two or three of their own employees and had two or three customers coming in to get a haircut and then another couple waiting, there's no way I could ever do it. So I got to find and you know, at one time it was a, a gentleman named Sal who was a barber by himself. Right. So it's making it hard for me. I'm, I'm sitting on a at a place where I can be collecting rent and it's been vacant for four or five years. Oh, I think I asked the question because I was wondering uh, how about the people, have you had any neighbors complain about the idea of traffic going in and out? If it was just employees, there wouldn't be the, you know, the constant in and out. Excuse me, Charles, could you take screen sharing off? Cause I don't know anybody else, but I, all I'm seeing is your files. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> um, so, would there be there would be, be mostly, parking there also? Yeah, and plus tenant parking. Right now, the I'm lucky I have a tenant upstairs. He Charles mm -hmm. told you there was one residential, and the lady doesn't have a car. Okay, mm -hmm. helps me out. So we try mostly, you know, for our employees. Obviously, I need a place for my employees to park. Right. And if Bill ever sells his property, I lose three spots in his driveway. Is that the house uh, adjacent to the lot? that you're intending yeah, to so, so our building, our buildings up on Walker Hill Road, you come down right. to behind our building, it's the vacant lot and the house directly next to the vacant lot down further, Clearfield Road. That's a that's where we've been parking. Okay. I mean I did drive by, so I, I know uh, what I was wondering if that neighbor had any problems because really that's the neighbor that's most impacted and the one on that backs up to it on from Dale Road, and there's no. They don't. I talked, not, to, I talked to Mark about it. Mark's been there forever and ever. He actually comes in and helps me get the store ready in the morning. Okay. Uh, he's, and he never had a problem with it. I always had, like I said, I've been there for. We've been there since 1975. Hopefully, after all these years, I have good rapports with our neighbors. You know. So like looking at the way it is now, the plan looks like it would be a vast improvement to the way the lot looks at the and moment. If we've been improving the building over the last few years since we owned the building ourselves. Before it was divided into condos and the turf farm owned some of the right. condo and yeah. they did not want to do any improvements on the building. But just lately we did the siding over, the roof, the windows. So I'm trying to get the drainage fixed and the next plan is to try to get some additional parking. Now your plan shows plantings. You mentioned a fence, but the plan shows, I believe it said arborvitae. Yeah, they want to put arborvitaes. I'm not too sure which way I want to go. You know, I, if the arborvitaes overgrow and become as close to the sidewalk. So the lady who, who owned the house before, she had shrubbery back there and she never maintained it and it was coming over the sidewalk. I just removed all that shrubbery. I want to do maybe a combination of both the fence and the arborvitaes, because I think the fence would hide the parking lot. So it would look like someone's residential back lot. If you had a back lot to your house and you put a fence up there, you know, that would help it. And maybe put some miniature shrubbery instead that's easier to maintain and probably won't grow over onto the sidewalk. Okay, I guess the plan, you know, I was going from the plan that you said. Right, right, right. And, we said it, you know, yeah, it I guess I would be preferable to some kind of shrubbery as opposed to just a white vinyl fence. No, no, I, I am too. I want to put some shrubbery up there. Awesome. Especially on the street, uh, especially on the street side. Quite honestly, if it was a white vinyl fence facing um, Clearfield, mm -hmm. I would not be in favor of that. No, but I'm I I am picture you know the opening the white vinyl fence and more miniature shrubbery instead of something that grows bigger. Yeah, because you, you, know, so you, know, you can't have a twelve but, fence facing Clearfield anyway. Yeah. That's against zoning regulations. So. It could only be four feet. Thanks there. for that, Rita. <laughs> All right, I, well, I, I'll find. I'm fine with the shrubbery either way. Yeah. You know, whatever, okay. whatever, whatever makes you guys happy. I just, you know. Well, not just me. The other, I one other question before. Um, yeah. How about the trash receptacles that you have showing on Clearfield that's, right now? Would they right. be moved behind so they wouldn't be out showing? They have them right there now. 
you know, and that's where they always been. And if we have yeah. room to put them back there, I'd like to put them back there. Right now, it's hard for the for the truck to get back in there to mm -hmm. empty them. So that's why right. they're put over there because we had such a narrow driveway. They they went in there. Yeah. They kept hitting the lady's fence. Yeah, and, I was thinking right, the building plan once. shows the driveway that maybe they could be behind instead. I think that would be. Mm -hmm. There's a loan a loading area there. Mm -hmm. See, we're. We're, we've been looking at the plan and we've been talking to the end town engineer. We were thinking about lowering the pitch, which would make it easier for us to pull things back there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make it more of a level lot instead of the lot that's shown in the plans. So once we did the drainage now from the back of our building down Clearfield, we've seen other things that we can possibly do to make it improve the, the plan. Is there a, do you have a timetable then? No. It all depends. It depends if I get the approval. So right now we did the drainage and I had to stop, mm -hmm. okay. you know, so either I get the approval and we go ahead and try to get the parking lot in, which I'd like to do, you know, as soon as possible, or, or I wasted a lot of money. <laughs> I, I plant grass seed again. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Any other commissioners have questions? Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah, please. Hey, John, how are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? I'm fine. I have a question for you. So um, as far as the parking lot goes, um, what were, were you looking to put blacktop there or were you going to make that? No, it would be black. Obviously, it would be blacktop. Um, I was just wondering what's the, um, as far as the, uh, when it rains, what's the runoff situation look like we, over there in that property? We did water studies and everything. It's done through the print. So that's already been, already incorporated into your print. There'd be galleys that would go in there and would retain some of the water before we put it out to uh, okay. the street. And and um, the applicant would be presenting a site plan to the plan and zoning commission, correct, Mister? Yeah, I already actually gave him those plans, and I said Derek has the plans too, the town engineer, and we've been discussing different options with him because right now, obviously, the drainage he allowed me to do was to get the water out from the back of our building that where the dry well was failing, it was flooding into our building. So there, you know, whatever we did on the plan, we might do a couple of just fin changes. And I've been in touch with Derek about it, so. Okay, thank you for that. And that's all just strange to try to improve what we already, already started. Are there any other questions for? Um, I have Somebody else, go ahead. No? Um, I, this may have been on your plan and I may have missed it. How about lighting? Is there? And, uh, lighting, we might put lighting off the back of our building and shine into, that's what it is right now. But I never put the light on because I never wanted it to shine into uh, Bill's house. And we well, closed. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm really thinking because now if you're going to use it for parking for It, it, it would be directional. I'm sorry. It'll be directional off my building and facing down into the parking lot. So it would shine out into anyone's houses. I'm an electrician by trade, by the way. Okay. So I already, I already thought about that also. How we would probably mount the lights in our building to face it down into the parking lot to give enough light for them to see, but not really, you know, shine into anyone else's house. And it, it would go off. The latest wear over there is, you know, 10 on the week weekdays and 10 30 at night so i i would leave the lights on maybe till 11 and shut them off or leave one for security okay hey i think uh are there any other questions from the commissioners no all right, then I guess I, I would move, I would request a motion to close the public hearing portion on this application. I move to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 This portion of the hearing is closed. And now we can open the uh, portion of the meeting, uh, the public meeting portion of, the, of this of, on the first application. And then we'll take the second one in uh, in sequence. Any is there any discussion on the first application? 
6242-21. Mr. Murkowski's here, uh, application. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, if I may, Char um, Charles, I just want to make sure, just so this is on the record, for the um, the first application, there is no impact um, to the uh, community at, um, for the variance for this property, is there? Um, not as far as I see. However, um, as I pointed out earlier, when this goes to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, they will be um, looking into, um, because they're going from a, a, they're making a use variance here. When they go to the commission, the commission will take all the necessary uh, requirements into consideration. Is there any other, uh... Any other discussion from the commissioners on this one? If not, is there a motion either in favor or against this application? I'll make a motion that we accept the application as submitted. Is there a second? I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So it's Four to zero, motion carries. All right, so now we will um, close the public meeting portion on this application and proceed to the public meeting on the second application, 6243-21. Is there any discussion from the commissioners on this application? Sandra, you may be on mute. Sandra, is Sandra with us still? Yeah. Sure. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Have the neighbors, are they aware of a parking lot going in this area or are they any opposition? I sent, do you mind me to, can I speak? No, no. Okay. No. So, so <laughs> uh, it's, it's just because the public here has been closed where I, um, but um, the, the, the neighbors has been sent uh, notification. Uh, signs has been posted uh, on, on the subject property, two signs, one on Walcott Hill and the other on Clearfield. I've had a couple of calls, a few people called and we explained to them what was going on and um, some expressed um, the need for parking. They thought it was a good thing, but um, okay. we, we didn't get any um, objections or anything like that. Okay, I'm just worried about the noise, car doors slamming, and if people are aware that this could be bringing more noise to that area. Well, the owners were aware, I can tell you that the um, adjoining owners within within 300 feet got notified, and then there was the, um, the signs, and then there was a um, legal ad in the newspaper. So I think we covered, um, we did everything possible to, to you know, let the um, neighbors aware of what would be happening, and uh, there don't seem to be any objection from anyone. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. There's no one testifying here tonight in opposition of it. Uh, they have a fair opportunity to do that. My personal observation as it is that this has to be an improvement over having employees park in the neighbor's driveway. I can't imagine how difficult that must be. Right. And when I, when I drove by, the some of your employees, I believe, happened to be changing shifts, and they were moving their cars on Clearfield. And I would, I think that's probably even more disturbing than to have them be a, in a parking lot, especially if it was well, you know, fenced or landscaped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a fair point, Reed. I thought your points about the trash were good. You know, there seems to be a plan there, and then um, I think the applicants plan with uh, shrubbery and fencing makes sense. So I think it's reasonable. Yeah, I think it will be, it could be a really big improvement actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. agreed. I didn't, don't usually down Clearfield when I go to Leo's to pick up my pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, when I did go to drive by, I was kind of like saying, whoa, this, this doesn't look good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, any other comments from the commissioners? If not, is there a motion to approve the application? Anybody else want to make a motion? I'll move to approve the application as submitted. Thanks, Sandra. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Marys. Okay, so we'll close the public meeting portion on that application. I believe the only other business we have tonight is to approve the minutes from Mr. Chair. Second. Yes. If you, if I may, I would like to make a motion to uh, postpone the minutes until uh, next meeting, uh, given that um, a lot of the members that or um, that were that that were at that meeting aren't present tonight. So I would like to make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Yep. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, is there any other business before the commission this evening, Charles? Uh, as far as I know, there is no other. Um, general matters uh, for you tonight. Um, no public comments or anything. Uh, Charles, could I bring up an issue that I've been noticing in town? A lot of uh, people putting their signs on different corners, advertising their business. Those are starting to pop up now in the snow shelves. Can Public Works go around and remove those? We have been having that um, ongoing problems and um, I myself has been going out. I, I, I must say that I've not done so for the longest while because of you know different reasons and uh, everything. But I we use I myself personally used to go out and move the illegal signs, and um, pretty soon I will be out there again. And with, with um, the the um, town manager and I are trying to come up with some way of um, of finding these these. Um, violators for that type of thing. So, um, right. yeah. Good. Um, well, thank you everyone for attending. I believe that's all the business in front of us this evening. If, uh, if there's a motion to adjourn, you can hear that. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Nobody wants to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Those in favor, <laughs> aye. Hi. Thanks, Jim, for oh, filling thanks. in. <laughs> thanks. Thank you very much. Good night. Thanks, thanks Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Uh, have a good night, all. You too. Thanks, you everyone. Too. Good night. Good night. Thanks again.